called the bulge walls, which are wall forms with form liners yeah. that can either bulge out or be pushed in. Yeah. We can take. Um, By the way, let me just ask. Yeah. I mean, I imagine that the first stage here, there's the fabric, and you have to pour the plaster in. Does it go in? Do you have to squeeze it in somehow? No. Under pressure? No. No? No. Just pour it right in. Just flows down. Yeah. This was, this was poured this way. So there was the top, and it just flows down. And the but concrete... Doesn't flow up there. You have to well, that's pour this, it down. Yeah, well, the, the, I mean, if it's fluid enough, it'll reach its own level. Oh, really? Top, top it up here and there. It must be quite fluid, then. Yeah. The plaster is quite fluid. Well, what, did, what plaster did you use? We're just using a high strength. They call it a dead site. Uh, here they call it a dead site plaster. It's a high strength plaster. Would that be like in the USA? You have ultra cal, ultra cal, ultra cal, like that, yeah. that kind of plaster. Yeah. But you can use regular plaster. And as you well. can even sand, and it's beautiful when you sand that. Yeah. And it's got. You can get a finish on that. Like you <laughs> With the um, cost a uh, full scale one outside. When he was down south, he had a team of people sort of lovingly massaging the concrete just down yeah, his fibers and his little bellies. And <laughs> you can plasticize concrete sufficiently so the concrete will flow just like the plaster. So mm -hmm. it's a self self leveling fluid mm -hmm. because it has drugs in it. It just yeah, it's quite used to too much water. You could probably vibrate it too, uh, or you could vibrate it. Is it? I mean, because concrete is supposed to be actually quite dry for that. They usually put too much water in. That's right. Yeah. Well, these are like surface. These are um, these are spray plaster. This is a kind of funny color texture on it. But these are plaster sprayed against the hanging sheer fabric. So this is a piece of fabric hung from two points. Yeah. This, right? yeah. And then spray from behind. Yeah. And then you end up with this shell. Yeah. Like that drawing, yeah. we start to get the, these, you can see these other ones, like this one here, you know? Mm. Mm. It's just the shape of the, mm. of the fabric under load. Mm. And now that's, everything that we, everything you see here is buildable at full scale. Yeah. And we've built everything here at full scale except for the shelves. Huh. Yeah. And that that will come now. That's the next that's, yeah. the, that's the next step. You, you, you made one large one, didn't you? We haven't done a proper shell. We haven't done a proper shell yet. We've made a mold. We, we tested the mold making for uh, testing the destruction or yes. Here's um, that's the full scale yeah. version of the plaster okay. model that we, that oh. we just saw. That's only about that thick. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it's fiber fiber reinforced. Mm -hmm. So it's a spray. It's just spraying on a hanging sheet of this yeah. fabric here. Really? And that's about a dollar a square meter mm -hmm. for that fabric. Is that right? That's half, half the fabric. Mm -hmm. Full scale. That's, that's, yeah, that's, the, that's, the, that's the Y column up that's outside. Yeah. Then these beams, now that we can cast these curves very economically, yeah. we can follow the bending moment curve for yeah. any beam. Yeah. And what happens when you follow the bending moment curve is extremely interesting. And it was uh, like opened my eyes to certain structural truths that I had. Because my whole education, I had a great education. Israel Sainik taught me for four oh, years. Yeah. And I had a great, great education. But it was all based on uniform section yeah. structural members. Uh, yeah. When you change the section, yeah. things are altered significantly. So this beam, for example, you see it's a, I mean, this is a real beam. It has one piece of steel in the bottom. And there's no shear reinforcing, just a single piece of steel. But it's actually an arch. Because yeah. It's really an arch. This whole thing is made of separate voussoirs yes. that, when it's loaded, go into compression across the top. Yeah. When you press down from the top, that That's squeeze right. up against it. Right? So it's like an arch turned backwards. What what, what is how do how do you describe that flower curve, the curve on the other side? Is it a parabola or a that 
That is, um, it is in fact a, a catenary or catenary. Yeah. But at this aspect ratio, it's indistinguishable yeah, from the right. parabola. You only see the difference when you have a really whatever. What is a catenary? A parabola? It's not. It's not. It's not. They're loaded different. The loading is different. They're both gravity shapes, but the catenary is loaded equally along the length of the chain, like the each mm -hmm. link of chain, like this. Yeah. But but um, but it's not loaded equally across its span because with the chain is hanging vertically, there's more chains per inch, more links per inch here than there are in the center of the span. Parabola is the is the stone thrown to the air, and that's the equal load along the span, like a suspension bridge. Mm -hmm. The cables are equally spaced, and the load is delivered equally, and then that that would cause a parabola yeah. to be formed. But it's still the maximum curvature is in the middle, and it lessens as you get towards the supports. That's right. And for a uniform load, the bending moment curve is a parabola. But for construction purposes, if we we just hang, what we do when we build these things full scale is we just hang a weight of chain. Yes, yeah, like this. Yeah. We just um, look at this material, which is from the sewing store. You know, this is very nice material. This is lead. Lead? Yeah, it's quite heavy. You feel it? It's, it's quite heavy. Lead? Yeah. Do you feel it? How heavy it is? A, there's lead in it. It's a little lead. It's a little lead. Um, little pieces of lead here inside this, on a little chain, or kind of thread of lead. They use this for weighting hems. There it is. See it? There's all these little pieces of lead there. So we just hang this across a piece, hang this 12 meters long, yeah. uh, along a piece of plywood or something, and you can cut a curve, which is essentially a parabola. So the gravity, yeah. the gravity gives you the bending moment mm. uh, work, a graph of the bending moment, mm. the bending work of the beam. So we can follow, have a beam whose depth varies in relation to the work it has to do. Yeah. And that's, so that's been uh, one line of research that's gone on for several years now yeah. with um, <coughs> a PhD engineering student that I'm working with. But I wonder, this is a curve generated by a vertical force at each intersection, yeah? That's right. If, uh, no, oh, I realize I'm in deep water here, because if the line of force was perpendicular to the curve at the, that point, whether that would make any difference. The line of force went this way instead? Yeah. Could and that this side, way? it went there. See, so, whether in fact these lines are extended <coughs> upwards would meet at a point. If it's a parabola, there's a focal point, and they will all meet yeah. at a point. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful curve. It's beautiful. And it's the suspension bridge, bridge curve. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And this, for example, is our little calculator for a compression structure. Yeah. This is the, that Y column that's outside is this one. Yeah. It's this one here. Right? Oh, I see. So the lines of force that fall directly inside mm -hmm. this shape mm -hmm. would be generated, for example, by this loading pattern. Yes. But you could do another series of loading patterns. So these would be columns arriving on yeah. the floor above or something like that. Yeah. Concentrated loads. I once went to Fry Autos fabrication shop from the University of Stuttgart. Uh, and it was in a little building that ditched that, you know. Yeah. And inside it, the models were far more beautiful than the finished object. <laughs> they each had a little lead well, whatever it was, quadrant measuring device from each grid intersection. And you had these beautiful membranes made out of copper wire or brass wire. And colossal steel beams around the edge to prevent them flapping themselves. You know, about like 8 inch by 12 inch or 16 by 8 steel beams. All necessary to resist the force provided by brass wires, which were, what, about 20 gauge or something, you know, very fine. Amazing 